With the skeleton animated, your next task is to choose the bones that will be used for skinning. Remember that some bones, such as end bones or nubs, as well as bones used to blend FK and IK are not required for the skinning process. Start by selecting all the bones in the viewport. Holding the ALT key down, click all the nub bones to deselect them. This includes the two nubs for the feet, the ten finger nubs, the two hand nubs, as well as the head nub and the pelvis nub. Next, press H to open the Select from Scene dialog. In the Select menu, make sure the Select Children option is disabled. Locate the FK and IK chains. The ones for the right side of the skeleton are easy to find at the very bottom of the dialog. Hold Ctrl down and deselect the FK and IK chains. Now locate the left side FK and IK chains. They should be halfway down the list. Deselect them as well and click OK to exit the dialog. Now you have the bones you need to affect the skinning modifier. To make that selection easier, create a selection set of the selected bones. Name it Skin Bones and press Enter. Click anywhere in the viewport to deselect the bones. Selecting them again is easier now that you have a selection set for that purpose. Using the Layer Toolbar, unfreeze the mesh layer. Select the Zombie Mesh and press Alt-X to disable X-Ray Mode. You're ready to start skinning. With the mesh selected, apply a Skin modifier. Click the Add Bones button and in the Select Bones dialog that appears, select the Skin Bones selection set you created a moment ago. This is much easier than picking individual bones from a hierarchy list. Click Select to exit the dialog. You can test the animation. It's fine for a first pass, but it obviously still requires a lot of work before it becomes even acceptable. Skinning is an important part of rigging, and skinning in particular is an art form. Different riggers work in different ways when it comes to skinning a model. Some use envelopes, where they adjust capsule-like gizmos to control how a bone affects its surroundings. Others use paint weights to control how the mesh deforms, although paint weights is more commonly used with meshes of high counts. With low poly models, riggers often work at a vertex level. It's a technique that gives you the most flexibility and the best control. It is the method you will be using here. To that effect, enable the Vertices option. This would make it possible to select vertices and weight them individually. Also, and because you won't be using envelopes, expand the display rollout and enable Show No Envelopes. In the Advanced Parameters rollout, notice the Bone Effect Limit option. This is where you define how many bones ultimately affect a given vertex. The default is set to 20, but you seldom need a higher value than 3 or 4. In fact, some game engines would not allow for more than 4 bones to affect a given vertex. Set the bone effect limit value to 4. As for the rest of the options in the skin modifier, you'll explore the ones you need as you go along. You will start from the bottom up, starting with the left toe and moving up the left foot and ultimately the rest of the leg. Zoom in on the left foot. If you are in edit envelope mode, you can disable it now. To keep things simple as you are just starting, you will isolate the left foot to make it easier to work on. Go down the stack to editable poly element level and select the left foot. If soft selection mode is enabled, disable it now. In the edit geometry rollout, click hide unselected. Exit element mode and go back up the stack to the skin modifier. Zoom in and adjust the view to get a better look at the foot. In the next movie, you adjust the skinning of the foot.